Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to this next lesson in science. In this lesson, we're going to carry on going through exam type questions, or ex old exam type questions, actually, of the photoelectric effect. And then we're going to move on to the chemical industry, which is really, you guys will call it the fertilizer industry or the fertilizer section. OK, so let's get going. It says, and this question reads from left to right, OK, because I didn't have space to put all the questions on this side. So. The way it works is, it says a relationship between the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected photons and the frequency of the radiation are investigated, is being investigated. So they are, re we're trying to relate the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectrons with the frequency. So they set up a circuit. We use got incident light on a piece of metal. It causes a current to flow through, and this is a microammeter, okay? Because the amps that are following through are so small, etc., etc. Now it says light of different frequencies are incident on the aluminium cathode of the photocell and the kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectrons is determined. The graph below is drawn according to the data collection for the investigation. So you see you've got kinetic energy here versus frequency. Okay, kinetic energy versus the frequency. So let's just think about that. If we think about our equation for our energy um, equation for light, it's E is equal to the work function plus EK or the kinetic energy, which is HF is equal to the work function plus EK, right? Um, and what they've done is they've rearranged this equation so that this, remember the straight line graph is Y equals MX plus C. So what they've made is EK, do you notice that EK is on your y-axis. So they've rearranged this to make EK the subject of the formula. So it's EK is equal to HF minus the work function. Okay, so you can see that F is the equivalent of our x-axis, EK is the equivalent of our y, and H is the equivalent of our gradient. And where this eventually would cut would be our work function. Okay, so that's what's happening there. So I don't even know if we're going to need this um, in working this out, but I'm just showing you what's going on with this graph. Now it says write down an investigative question for this investigation. So first of all, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to say it anyway. When you are doing the investigative question, you need to have a question mark at the end of your question, okay? If you just make a statement, it is not a question, and then you will not get the marks, okay? So you need to write an investigative question, and it has to relate the two variables, the maximum kinetic energy and the frequency of radiation. So your investigative question could be something along the lines of how will the maximum kinetic energy be affected um, by the frequency of the radiation? Okay, or you could have written, will the maximum kinetic energy increase if the frequency of the radiation increases? or does it decrease, or is it proportional, or something like that. But you have to ask a question, and you have to relate the two variables, which are your frequency of radiation and the maximum kinetic energy. Right. Now they asked us to write down the independent variable and the controlled variable. Now the independent variable is the one that we change. It's the one that we change. And in this case, it happens to be the frequency of the incident light. They've said that light of different frequencies are incident. So the thing that we're changing is the frequency of the light. Okay. And what is the control variable? Well, there are lots of control variables, but I think that the most important one is that the metal, the cathode. So it would be the type of cathode because 
different metals have got different work functions, which means you'll have a different kinetic energy caused if you had different work functions. Then it says write down a possible conclusion for this investigation. Okay, now obviously you haven't done this investigation, but you have got the results here from the graph. Now what's important is your conclusion has to be what? The most important thing is your conclusion has to be a statement and it has to relate the two variables that you asked about in your question. It has to relate those two variables. So your conclusion would be that as the frequency increases, so the kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy increases. That would be my possible conclusion. Now it says aluminium is replaced by another metal X which is a work function of 8 times by 10 to the minus 19 joules. The incident light has a wavelength of 200 nanometers. It says calculate the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons ejected from the surface of the metal. Okay, so now we're going to be using this equation here. Okay, we are told that we have another metal which has a work function of 8 times by 10 to the minus 19. So the work function is 8 times by 10 to the negative 19 joules. We are also told that the wavelength of the incident light is 200 nanometers. We have to convert that just to meters. So it's times by 10 to the negative 9 meters. Grade 12, you need to know that nano stands for minus 9. Okay, right. Now, what do we want? We want the EK. They want the maximum kinetic energy. Okay, this doesn't help us much because we want frequency. So, the thing with the frequency is we know that C is equal to lambda frequency, right? So, do you agree that we can say that frequency is the same as C over lambda, where C is the speed of light? Okay, so do you agree we can now say that we can substitute into an equation this equation, yeah, this HF equation. Okay, so we're going to say the Planck's constant, which is 6,63 times 10 to the negative 34, multiplied by the frequency, but remember the frequency can be replaced by C over lambda, which is 3 times by 10 to the 8 over the wavelength, which is 200 times by 10 to the negative 9, minus the work function, which is 8 times by 10 to the negative 19, is going to be equal to EK. All I've done is taken that work function and taken it to the other side of the equal sign. Okay, so now we need a calculator. So let's get out the calculator and let's move it over so we can actually see what we're working out. So let's do it. It goes 6.63 exponent negative 34. Remember you find this on your formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize it, it's on your formula sheet. Same with the speed of light, it's 3 times by 10 to the 8 is on your formula sheet. Multiplied by 3 exponent 8, divided by 200 exponent negative 9 equals, okay, minus 8 exponent negative 19 equals 1.945 times by 10 to the negative 19. So it's a very small amount of kinetic energy, but if you look over here, you can see that this kinetic energy was also of the kind of 1 times by 10 to the minus 19. Okay, so this is 1.95, because we're always round up to two decimals. So it's 1.95 times by 10 to the minus 19. So EK equals 1.95 times by 10 to the negative 19 joules. Awesome, so now we found that out. 1,95 times by 10 to the negative 19 joules. 
Now it says the intensity of the incident light is now has increased. How will this effect affect the maximum kinetic energy calculated in question 10.4? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so if you look at this equation, okay, if you look at this equation, where in this equation is there any uh, allowance for intensity? Remember, intensity is brightness. Is there any place in this equation where it allows for intensity? It doesn't. The intensity does not affect the kinetic energy at all. There is no effect, no effect, effect. And the reason for this is because the intensity increases the number of electrons that are emitted, photoelectrons that are emitted per second, but it does not affect the kinetic energy at all. Nowhere in this equation is there space for intensity. Okay, so that helps you a bit, I think. Now it says the wavelength of the incident light is now increased, keeping the intensity constant. How will this affect the maximum kinetic energy? Write down only increases, decreases, or remains the same. Okay, so if we increase the wavelength, what happens to the frequency? The frequency is going to decrease, which means that the kinetic energy is going to decrease. So the answer is decrease. Okay, the frequency, yeah, you can see HF is equal to WO plus EK. If we decrease the frequency, the work function remains constant, obviously your kinetic energy has to decrease as well. Okay, let's try another question. It says, Learners perform an experiment to investigate the effect of a wavelength of light on the photoelectric effect. They radiate a metal disc M with three light sources of different wavelengths and note the ejection of the photoelectrons from the metal. The results obtained are shown in the table below. So here's your wavelengths, 480, 620 and 570 and 10 to the minus 9, please note. Yeah, we can see that electrons are ejected and moving away from the metal at 480. 620, no electrons are ejected. And 570, electrons are ejected and not moving away from the metal. Okay, that's interesting. Now it says, define the photoelectric effect in words. Okay, so this is a definition that you guys need to learn. And what does it do? It relates the fact that photoelectric effect is the emission of electrons when light of a certain frequency called the threshold frequency hits the surface of specific metals. Okay, so you need to go and learn the actual proper definition. I've spoken to you about this before. And I've mentioned to you that that if you go and look at the exam guidelines, you need to get your hands on the exam guidelines. You guys need to ask your teacher for an example, of the, for a copy of the exam guidelines if you don't already have one, because all the definitions are in the exam guidelines, word perfect as you need to know them. Okay, now again it says write an investigative question for this experiment. Now it seems interesting to me that before they always used to ask you for hypothesis. Now they're asking for an investigative question, which makes me think that the new fashion is to ask for fashion in inverted commas, is to ask for an investigative question. So as I said before, the investigative question has to have a question mark at the end of it and it has to relate the two variables and the two variables look like it's going to be how does the wavelength of light affect the ejection of the photoelectrons of the metals okay because this is a qualitative um def explanation do you agree they haven't measured anything they've only observed so it's definitely qualitative and not quantitative right now they say give a reason why light source a and not light source B will eject electrons from the metal disc M. Okay, so I would say that light source B is light that is not of the threshold frequency. It hasn't met the threshold frequency of the metal 
and for that reason it cannot eject electrons whereas light source A is above the threshold frequency and therefore electrons are ejected. Now it says calculate the work function of metal M. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Do you agree that this is not viable? No ejections are ele electrons are ejected. So now we just have to look at A and C. A, the electrons ejected are moving away, ejected and moving away. So they've got some kinetic energy. Whereas yeah, the electrons are ejected and not moving. So they do not have kinetic energy. Therefore, this wavelength matches the energy of light that's required to get out the electrons. Okay, so we know that E equals HF, but we also know that F is equal to C over lambda, right? So therefore, we can say that this is going to be HC over lambda. So we can work out the work function. It's 6.63 times by 10 to the negative 34, multiplied by the speed of light is 3 times by 10 to the 8, all over this wavelength, which is 570 times by 10 to the negative 9. Grade 12, the number of students that don't put in that 10 to the minus 9 and then get the sum wrong. It's so frustrating. So please go look in the column heading for what the size of your units are. Okay, so let's use our calculator. Okay, so let's use a fraction for a change. That's 6.63 exponent negative 34 multiplied by 3 exponent 8 all divided by 570 exponent negative 9 equals 3.5 for all 489 but the 9 rounds is up to 49 okay so it's 3.49 times by 10 to the negative 19 so it's 3 comma 49 times by 10 to the negative 19 and then what unit are we looking for work function work function is energy joules Okay, we're looking for the duals. Right, then it says, calculate the maximum speed with which the electrons will be ejected from the metal, metal disk when it is irradiated with light source A. Okay, so now this year is the energy, is the work function. Okay, this would be the incident light wavelength, okay? So that's gonna give us the incident light. The difference between the two is gonna give us our kinetic energy, do you agree? We've got the energy minus the work function is going to give me EK, all right? So we know that this is again, HC over the wavelength minus this work function, three comma four nine, times 10 to the negative 19. Let's work out the first bit first. Let's work out what the energy is, the kinetic energy, and then we'll work out what the velocity is or the speed is, okay? So H is 6.63 times by 10 to the negative 34. Again, guys, it's on your formula sheet. Three times by 10 to the eight, all over the wavelength, and the wavelength is 480 times by 10 to negative 9. Okay, and we're going to subtract 3 comma 4 9 times by 10 to negative 19, and that's going to give us our kinetic energy. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to go 6.63 exponent negative 34 multiplied by 3 exponent 8. Oh, sorry, that was silly. Let's try again. 6.63 exponent negative 34 multiplied by 3 exponent 8 all over 480 exponent negative 9 equals minus 3.49 exponent negative 19 
equals. So that's my kinetic energy. It's 6.54 times by 10 to negative 20. Okay. So 6,54 times by 10 to negative 20 is equal to a half mv squared. Okay, that's my kinetic energy. But the mass of an electron is 9.11 times by 10 to minus 31. So now we need to find the speed. Okay, so it says we've got... 6,54 times by 10 to the negative, actually this is silly. Let me just erase this bit at the top here so that I can work up here. Silly, silly, silly for me to try and squish this in. Okay, and I'm gonna change color so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. Um, okay, so now we've got 6,54 times by 10 to the negative 20. To get rid of this half, you multiply both sides by 2, so we're going to times that by 2, and then we're going to divide by 9,11 times by 10 to the negative 31, because that's the mass of an electron, and then square root it. Oh, terrible. I'm going to make it um, erase purple. Square root it, and that's going to equal V. That's the V, right? So let us do that on our calculator. So we're gonna get this. I'm not going to um, round this off. I'm gonna use it as it is. I'm gonna multiply it by two, divided by 9.11, exponent negative 31 equals, and then I'm gonna square root the answer, and I'll get a velocity. Oh, that's 378,845 and comma zero nine. So it's three seven double eight four five. Three seven double eight four five comma zero nine. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what happened with the four. Okay, so let's just fix that. And obviously, um, I could show you how to do that and make it into SI units, but you don't have to worry about that. Um, so that is the velocity or the speed, which is 3 comma 7, 9 times by 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 meters per second is the velocity. It's pretty fast. It is very fast. So these photoelectrons are traveling very fast. Okay. Now it says... Light source A is a blue light and light source B is an orange light. Which color possibly could C be? Choose between violet, green, and red. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the link. Okay, and then we're going to, it becomes, it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, ultraviolet, and infrared. Where this is the lowest frequency and this is the highest frequency, which means that this is the lowest wavelength and this is the highest wavelength, right? Okay, so if you think about this, they've told us that A is blue. A is blue. They've told us that B is orange. B is, so I don't know why I did B. Sorry, let's just fix that. Eraser. A is blue and B is orange. And you can see that C fits between them. C is fitting between them. So it can either only be green or yellow. And the options they've given us are violet, green, and red. So therefore it has to be green. There you go. Okay, because green, this is at, A is at 480 nan, um, times by 10 to the minus 9 nanometers. And B is at 620 nanometers. So, therefore, C has to be in the middle here. Okay, happy with that. Right, let's do another question. Okay, it says... During this investigation, I'm sorry about um, the quality of this. This is how it was actually produced by the Department of Education um, or reproduced by the Department of Education on the website. Um, but I still wanted to do this question because it's a nice question. So I apologize for the way it looks. Okay, if you can't see, the graph does that. 
Okay. Right, but there are points over here. It says during the investigation of a specific type of cathode, a photoelectric of a photoelectric cell, radiation of different wavelengths is used in the following results. So this is the wavelength in nanometers again, which we know is times by 10 to the negative 9. And this is the maximum kinetic energy in joules. So again, it's all times by 10 to the minus and negative 19. So to find the work function, the work function is the minimum energy required for an electron to be emitted from a specific metal. Now it says, what is the relationship between wavelength of the radiation and the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron? Explain the answer. Okay. So from here, just from this, you can see that the wavelength, as the wavelength decreases, this wavelength is 250, 215, 187, 167, 150. The maximum kinetic energy is increasing. Do you see this? It's 0.4, 1.73, um, 3.04, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5,
we can take out HC and you're left with one over the wavelength minus one over the wavelength of the work function is equal to EK. The only reason I want to do that is to make it prettier on the calculator. So this is going to be 6 comma 6, 3 times by 10 to the negative 34 multiplied by 3 times by 10 to the 8 or multiplied by 1 over the wavelength which they've given us, it's uh, 160 times by 10 to the negative 9, minus 1 over 255 times by 10 to the negative 9. Okay, so let's work out what that is on the calculator. Sure, it's quite a long sum. So we can do that. It is 6.63 exponent negative 34. That's it, bit. Multiplied by 3 exponent 8 equals okay that's that bit done that bit done right now multiplied by bracket fraction one over 160 exponent negative nine minus fraction one over 255 exponent negative 9 close bracket equals okay so that is the kinetic energy 4.63 times by 10 to the negative 19 is the kinetic energy so ek equals 4 comma 63 times by 10 to the negative 19 joules okay so you know what i'm going to do i'm actually going to raise all the ink okay and we're going to go ek equals 4.63 times by 10 to the negative 19 joules, right? But we know that that is equal to half mv squared is equal to that. So therefore, we can solve for v. We can say v equals 2 times 4,63 times by 10 to the negative 19. That's getting rid of the half. We've multiplied both sides for the half by 2 divided by the mass of an electron, which is 9,11 times by 10 to the negative 31. And now we need to square root it. So we square root it. And yes, I know that we can plus or minus it, but this is just a speed. So therefore it's always gonna be positive because it's a scalar. Okay, so let us use our calculator. So we're gonna go multiplied by two, divided by 9.11, exponent negative 31 equals and then we're going to square root our answer equals and we get a hundred one thousand and eight three three five comma one nine one thousand and eight three three five comma one nine equals one thousand and eight three three oh gone blank three three five comma one at nine three three five comma one nine obviously you guys don't have to remember it like my most like i do but my stupid calculator misses goes missing okay and then obviously we don't want it like this we want it an si unit so it's going to be one two three four five six so it's going to be one comma zero one times by ten to the what did we say one two three four five six meters per second and you can see I'm rounding off to two decimal places over here. Okay, right, nice question. Right, next question, it says, the diagram below shows a circuit in which the photocell is irradiated alternately with red light and with blue light to demonstrate the photoelectric effect. So first they shone red light onto this and then they shone blue light on it. And they did this to show the photoelectric effect. An ammeter reading is recorded when the photocell is irradiated with red light. So red light gave us an electron flow, okay? It says, give an explanation for this observation. Okay, I just did. When they shone the red light onto the metal, it had a high enough frequency to cause electrons to be emitted, which caused there to be a current in the circuit. Okay, blue light with the same intensity as the red light is now used to radiate the photocell. How will this influence the following? Okay, now let's just think about this again. It's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, ultraviolet, and infrared, okay? Red light worked. 
but this is a lower frequency. This is a high frequency. This is a low frequency. So now when they shine blue light on, do you agree that it's got a higher frequency? It's got a higher frequency. So blue light has got a higher frequency than red light. Okay. So if we look at our formula, we've got HF is equal to the work function plus the kinetic energy. Okay. So now it says, how will this, the fact that we're now shining blue light of the same intensity, okay, so the same brightness, how will this affect the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons? Right, only increase, decrease, or stays the same. So if the frequency increases, do you agree the kinetic energy has to increase as well? So the kinetic energy is going to increase. Now it says, how will this affect the ammeter reading? Write down only increase, decrease, or stays the same. And the correct answer is increase. Why? Because the ammeter measures the rate of flow, okay, of electrons, okay. It's basically um, Q is equal to IT, therefore I is equal to Q over T. So it's measuring the rate at which the electrons are going around the circuit. So if we increase the kinetic energy, we're obviously increasing the velocity at which these electrons are going around the circuit. And if that's the case, we're obviously increasing the ammeter reading. Okay. Right, now let's just erase all writing if I can find my mouse. There it is. Okay, and let's change the color. It says the wavelength of blue light used in the demonstration is 4.5 times by 10 to negative 7 meters. Okay. So the wavelength of the blue light is 4,5 times by 10 to the negative 7 meters. Calculate the threshold frequency. So they want the threshold frequency. Okay. Sorry, that's not a zero. That's blue light. Hey. Eh? Of the metal used in the photocell, if the average speed of the emitted photoelectrons is 4.78 times by 10 to the 5. So the V is 4.78 times by 10 to the 5 and they want the threshold frequencies. Okay, so that's a bit different. Before we've always been working out the velocity, now we want to work out the threshold frequency. And we've got the wavelength of the incident light. Okay, so let's write down our equation. We know that E is equal to the work function plus our EK, right? But E is HF, but it can also be written as HC over lambda is equal to the work function plus a half mv squared. And I'd like to suggest we first work out the work function and then we can work out what the threshold frequency is. So do you agree that hc over lambda minus a half mv squared is equal to the work function? So we're going to first work out this bit and then we're going to work out what the frequency is. So that is 6 comma 63 times by 10 to the negative 34. You can find that on your formula sheet. Multiplied by the speed of light, which is 3 times by 10 to the 8. All divided by the wavelength they give us, which is 4 comma 5 times by 10 to the negative 7. Minus a half times by the mass, which is 9 comma 11 times by 10 to the negative 31. I'm running out of space multiplied by the velocity which they gave us, which is 4,78 times by 10 to the 5 all squared. Excellent. So let's pop that in our calculator. Sure, long sum. So we've got fraction. 6.63 exponent negative 34 multiplied by 3 exp mm -mm, exponent 8 divided by 4.5 exponent negative 7 equals equals minus bracket 0 0.5 multiplied by 9.11 exponent negative 31 
multiplied by bracket 4.78 exponent 5 close bracket squared close bracket equals sure so the work function is 7.08 times by 10 to the 12 so that is 7 comma 08 times by 10 to the 12 and that is the work function so do you agree we can now so that that is equal to hf0 so to get the frequency we just divide by Planck's constant so let's do that so we're going to divide that by 6.6.63 exponent negative 34 and we will get 1.06 times by 10 to the 46 sure the frequency is 1.06 times by 10 to the 46 hertz there we go right kids that's it for today have a great day and i will speak to you tomorrow cheers